Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this rotating circles using the concept of oscillation. What you may see here is a set of smaller white circles in a shape of a bigger circle that is traveling in an even bigger circle's circular path. But that is not actually what is happening. These smaller white circles are actually traveling independently of each other in an oscillating motion along a straight line. Before I show you how it works, I have a coding math video on the concept of oscillation. So if you want to get a better understanding, be sure to check that out. First, let's start by drawing the biggest circle. So I'm gonna use a function called ellipse and ellipse takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle. And then the third and the fourth are the width and the height of the circle. So I want the circle to be in the middle of my canvas. So we're gonna put width divided by two and height divided by two here. And then let's do the size to be 300 by 300. So actually, instead of putting width divided by two and height divided by two here, I want to translate or I want to move the origin point from the top left corner of my canvas to the middle point here. So I can do that by using a translate function and then put in the two arguments as the new origin point. So let's do width divided by two and height divided by two. And once we move the origin point, we can put in zero comma zero here. All right, so everything is still the same. Next, I want to draw a smaller circle, and this smaller circle is going to travel along the circular path here. So we need to figure out what are the x and y location of this smaller circle, and we can do that by using the rules of trigonometry. You can watch my video on how we convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, but essentially we need two equations, and these two equations are x equals to r times cosine of angle, and y equals to r times sine of angle. So let's us also declare x and y variables as well as angle. Let's set angle to zero. And also, how about we also do radius equals to 150. And then instead of putting 300 here, let's do r times two and r times two. And do not forget to draw this smaller circle. So let's do it at x and y, and then give it a size of 20. A few tweaks. So I'm going to put this after, and then I'm going to not color the big circle. And I want the smaller circle to be the color red. And also, I am going to use the angle mode degrees. So I'm going to also write a function called angle mode and put in degrees here. So right now this red circle is not traveling anywhere. It's just stuck at angle equals to zero. So let's move it. We're going to move it based on the location of the mouse. We can map using the equation called map and we're gonna map what? We're gonna map the mouse x location from zero to width to the degrees of zero to 360. All right, so now it's traveling in the clockwise direction along this circular path. Now I'm going to draw two more circles and these two circles, one is going to follow the X location of the red circle and the other one is going to follow the Y location of the red circle. So we can do that by calling the ellipse function again. And instead of putting X comma Y, we're going to do X comma zero. Let's do the same size. And the second one is going to be zero comma Y, same size. And let's give it a color, how about white? All right, so right now, one is following the X location of the red circle and the other one is following the Y location of the red circle. You can see that it's traveling, what? Along a straight line, right? Along the X and Y axis. How about we draw the axis out as well? So we can use a function called line and line takes in a total of four arguments, the x and y coordinates of the first point and the x and y coordinate of the second point, where these two points are connected to make a line. So let's do the x-axis first. So it's going to be negative r comma zero and r comma zero. All right. And then another one will be zero comma negative r and zero comma r. And what these two white circles are doing is that it is traveling in an oscillating motion right around a center point, which is the origin point. 
And this oscillating motion is called a simple harmonic motion, which can be represented by the sine and the cosine function, which is exactly what these two locations are, right? Because x equals to r times cosine of angle and y equals to r times sine of angle. What we're going to do next is that we're going to draw another set of x and y axis, but we're going to rotate it counterclockwise by 45 degrees. So let's copy these two lines of code and use a rotate function. And we're going to rotate by 45 degrees counterclockwise, and that's why I need to put negative 45 here. All right, so let's give it a different color so we can see. So let's do blue for the y-axis and green for the x-axis. And then we need to also reset it back to black here. All right, let's try this. And I'm also going to comment this out first. All right, so now we shift. So if we don't shift it at all, right? So we can see that the x-axis is blue and then the y-axis is green. And now we shift it by 45 degrees. Now, what if we want to draw two more of these white circles? have them travel along this new axis, but still follow the location of the red circle. What if we start by declaring two more variables, the new x and y coordinates? So let's do x2 equals to, and we're going to just set it equals to the same equation first, and let's see what happens. So y2 equals to r times sine of angle. And then we're going to draw it out as well. So we're going to draw the exact same thing as this. But we're going to replace it by x2 and y2. And then let's give it the same color of white. Angle. All right. So and then we're going to have it move. OK, so this is not exactly what we want, right? Because right now, everything is shifted by 45 degrees, meaning that at angle equals to 0, the x coordinate is at equals to 1, right? And then the y coordinate is equals to 0, which is exactly the same thing as what it is on the main axis. So we need to change something in these two equations such that the circles are following the x and y locations of the red circle, right? So what we want is that, let's change this to 45 and comment this out again. So at angle equals to 45, the locations of these two circles need to be shifted a little bit, right? So we want actually this circle to be equals to one, and we want the circle to be equals to zero. What that means is in terms of x and y as a function of angle, we want y at angle equals to 45 to have a value of 1 and x at angle equals to 45 to have a value of 0. If you look at the sine and the cosine graphs here as a function of angle, y equals to 1 and x equals to 0 when angle equals to 90. So we need to tweak these two equations such that inside the parentheses, it equals to 90 when we give an argument of 45. And we can do that by adding the shifting angle, or in this case, 45, inside the parentheses. So now, y of angle equals to sine of angle plus 45, and x of angle equals to cosine of angle plus 45. So let's first declare a new variable. Let's call it shifting angle and set it to 45, and then our angle will be at 0, right? And then we need to add shifting angle here. All right, so All right, so at angle equals to 45, right? And this is what happens. Now we can start adding more axis. So let's first, we don't need this green and blue stroke colors anymore. We want everything to be black. So instead of declaring the shifting angle as a variable that is set to 45, we're going to make it an array. 
So we're going to change it to an array, and then we're going to declare another variable called num access. And this is going to be a variable that controls the number of access that we want. So let's start with two. So two will be what we have right now, right? So the main axis and then another one that is shifted 45 degrees. And then in the setup function, we're going to calculate the shifting angles based on the number of axes that we want. So let's use a for loop. So for let i equals to zero, i less than num of axis, i plus plus, and then the shifting angle of i will be equals to. So the equation that we're going to use is going to be i times 90 divided by num of axis. So let's try to understand this. So if we only have just one axis, which is the main axis, i will be equal to 0, right? So 0 times 90 divided by num of axis will be equals to 0, meaning that we're not shifting it anywhere. And now we want the second axis to be shifted 45 degrees, right? So if i equals to 1 and then 1 divided by 2, right, is one and a half, one and a half times 90 is 45. So now that we changed the shifting angle from a variable to an array, we also need to change the x2 and y2 variables to an array as well. So let's start by declaring x2 and y2 as an array. And we are going to use the for loop as well to populate the x2 and y2 array. So let's do for let i equals to zero, i less than the num axis, i plus plus, and then we're gonna copy these two lines of code. In here, it's gonna be x2 of i equals to r times cosine of angle plus shifting angle of i, right? And then y2 of i equals to r times sine of angle plus shifting angle of i as well. And now we're going to draw the two smaller white circles based on the x2 and y2 location. So we have it here already. So how about we just, first we need to move this down here. And then we want to copy the set of code and then put it in here. So what do we have here? So now we have calculated the x2 and y2 locations of the smaller white circles. We want to rotate it by negative of the shifting angle of i, right? And then we also need to put x2 of i here and then y2 of i. Let's try this. All right, so now it's still the same. We can clean this up a little bit more too because right now we also have this set of codes that draw the main axis and the main two smaller circles, which now it's just a repeated of what we have in here. So let's delete this. All right. And now all we have to do is that we need to change the number of the axis here. So let's do three. Ooh, what's going on here? All right, don't freak out. The thing that is going on here is that we forgot to put in two functions that are very important when we do transformation, which is push and pop. So let's put it here, push and pop. And essentially the push and pop function, push save the transformation and then pop returns it back to the original state that we are in. And we need to put these two functions every time we call a new circle because we want to save the new transformation which is the rotating of shifting angle right and then we want to return it back before we rotate it again so let's try this all righty and now all we have to do is we just play around with the number of axes that we want okay and so now instead of having it mapped to our mouse location what if we just increment it by one. All right. The last piece, which is the fun piece, is how do we beautify this? I am going to change the color of my background to this turquoise color 
and then I'm going to change the color of my main circle to be black and then how about let's give the stroke white color and let's do transparency to be 100 so it's not very very bright and yeah just do that and this is just like the original image that I had shown you um, and then let's do let's give it just a huge number of axes here and there you go and this is just using the concept of oscillation where the circles just travel back and forth on a straight path and it gives this illusion that it's traveling in a circular motion which is really cool so give it a try